Attack helicopters can be a major game changer in terms of ground assaults. Having great air cover has always been proved to be extremely useful in defense or attack. Today here on FTD Facts, however, we continue with our great military comparisons, and not necessarily to say which one is better, but look at the differences between two really fascinating attack helicopters. And these are the Apache AH-64 and the TAI Augusta Westland T129 ATAK, which by the way has the longest name of any helicopter in the entire world, so I'm just gonna give it its like, you know, code name. And that is the T129. Had to look at my screen for that one. How's it going, guys? Welcome to FTD Facts. My name is Dave Walpole, and welcome to a channel where I usually look at people, countries, cultures, and boom shakalaka, you guessed it, militaries. Now, before anybody gets all crazy, I know some of you guys in our thing, you guys have been saying, yo, you've been doing a lot of India and Pakistan content. I know, I'm on top of it. And of course, for these two helicopters, the Apache is in India and the 129 is Pakistan. But one of the real main reasons I want to compare these two is because the T129 is rather new and it's kind of built around the Apache and whether or not the Apache can still keep up against it. And that's kind of what I want to know. But with that, let's get cracking. But before I do, I just want to let you guys know if you're liking this stuff, hit the subscribe button and that bell notification. And if you like this video, just hit the like button so I know to do more of it. And on top of that, if you guys want more military stuff, we'll just keep an eye on our playlists. I'm going to put it throughout this video in the you know description box below. And at the end, we got some really good stuff that you might want to check out. At least give those playlists a look. So the Apache AH-64, now this is one of my favorite helicopters in the entire world. To be perfectly honest, I really like the old school, school, school Huey helicopter from the Vietnam War. I just think it's great. But the Apache, you know, it's been featuring a lot of movies, a lot of different militaries from around the world use it. It's really a reliable aircraft. So the first flight of the Apache AH-64 began on September 30th, 1975. But however, it's interesting to know that the production for this advanced helicopter began in 1973, when designs for the Hughes helicopter were approved to compete with other companies such as Lockheed Martin and Bell, who actually were the developers of the Huey helicopter or the Iroquois. Now, of course, during that time, there was this big competition between these three companies. This is because the military wanted to replace the good old AH-56 Cheyenne helicopter, which was due to be canceled. An interesting fact for this competition, although the Apache flew on September 30th, 1975, the Bell also had a flight for its type of aircraft that was shortly after on October 1st. But however, by 1976, the U.S. Army had approved the Apache AH-64 aircraft, and by 1982, this craft had entered full production. Also, one side note that I found really fascinating is the fact that shortly after a test in 1981, they deemed that the helicopter itself needed a new engine. And for most of you, you may wonder where they get the name Apache. Well, this is because the American military had been using Indian tribe names for all helicopters in the past, and therefore the Apache seemed appropriate. Moving right over, let's take a look at the TIA Augusta Westland T129 ATAK helicopter. See how I looked up there? It's really, I gotta remember, it's hard. Now this helicopter is classified as a new kid on the block. The development for this helicopter came from Turkey in 2007 when they stated that there was a deal between the Italian company known as Augusta Westland in order to make a brand new helicopter for that country. Basically, it was a replacement for the famous Augusta A129 Mangusta, which is very much modeled after the Apache and looks very, very close to the Apache. As a matter of fact, some people pretty much think of it as the Augusta Westland version of the Apache A64. The deal was for 51 of these new helicopters to be delivered and assembled by the Turkish Aerospace Company with a worth of $1.2 billion. The Italian company Augusta Westland approved this in 2008, giving Turkey the rights to produce their own aircraft. Now, one thing that is very different for this aircraft is it is made for the type of climate that is within Turkey. And that is specifically a hot climate. 
For the T-129, it had its first flight on September 28, 2009 at the Augusta Westland facility in Italy. And by 2013, the company had delivered a few of these to Turkey for testing. However, unfortunately, they didn't meet the initial requirements. And it wasn't until May of 2014 that Turkey had received their first nine official T-129s. So let's talk about how many countries operate these aircrafts. So far for the Apache A64, it has quite a lot of them. You have the USA, Israel, the UK. Theirs is slightly different. It's again licensed under the Augusta Westland Company. There's also the Netherlands, which first used its helicopters in Africa. There's also Indonesia, Israel, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and the UAE, as well as Kuwait, Japan, Singapore, Greece, South Korea, Taiwan and as well India receiving a bunch of these in the beginning of 2019. The T-129 though, however, it's, you know, really small in operators because pretty much Turkey's the only country that operates this aircraft. Pakistan, of course, has 30 of these on order and the deal was finalized in 2018, which means they will be delivered over the following five years. Depending on when you're watching this video, I mean, you could be watching this in 2022. I mean, it's 2019 now, so they might already have them. As for other countries, though, there are still some talks about whether or not the T-129 is a good helicopter for certain countries, but so far, it's just really Pakistan that has an interest officially. With that, let's move along to variants. Now, again, T-129s, this is a little bit tricky because they're a rather new aircraft. For the T-129s, in 2018, it was stated that there have been a total of 59 of these helicopters that have been made or are on order for Turkey. Not sure if this realistically includes the 30 for Pakistan. I'm going to assume not. But as for variants, it's pretty much just got one. You got the T-129. However, there are plans for future upgrades. For example, there is talks of the T-129B. And as well, there is plans for a much more improved version, which is the ATAK-2. Now, from what I hear, this ATAK is more or less an improved version of the 129 Mangusta. But however, I'm not 100% sure on that because there's not a lot of information on the ATAK. TAK2. As for the 129Bs, again, it's really hard. They have new standards for the upgrades for this aircraft, which these standards were put into effect in 2014, so they're going to fix the future aircrafts. The only thing that is confirmed about the ATAK2 is the fact that it's going to have a much larger payload and, of course, perform better as a whole. Don't necessarily know what that means. The Apache, however, man, they've got like at least eight different variants. It's great. However, some of these are either future concepts or they are canceled versions of upgrades. And some of them are basically exported versions. For example, the UK's Augusta Westland version. However, to start it all off, there's just the good old-fashioned original version. But oddly enough, there was also a planned B version, which was supposed to get an overhaul. However, this version got cancelled, but it didn't mean that those upgrades didn't go into the helicopter. The reason for this was because there was an increased amount of funding that went into the program in 1991, and therefore, more upgrades happened with the Apache, and therefore, it became the Apache AH-64C. During this time, the Apache received a new engine and radar. However, this upgrade was very, very short term because in 1993, it was canceled. Simply due to the fact that they also created the Apache AH-64D, also called the Longbow, which received many upgrades and a new fire control radar. There is also the AH-64E, which had new engines, new digital abilities in connectivity. Many of these upgrades came in 2012, and this is basically the more modern upgraded version. There was also plans to produce an upgraded F version, but they've canceled that because they're going with a brand new type of helicopter, which is created by Boeing called the Boeing Future Vertical Lift Vehicle. On top of that, there was also a Naval C version made. They had new landing gear and a few other changes to avionics. However, due to the lack of funding, they didn't allow this version to move forward. Of course, within it, there's also what is known as block changes. Basically, this is a overhaul with a combination of equipment changes. With that, let's take a look at some of the specifications. This gives us a general indication of whether or not the T-129 
can do better than the Apache. And for this, we're gonna use the A slash D versions for the specifications. Also, I forgot to mention one thing. Now, originally the Apache was called the Hughes Apache, but now it is classified as a Boeing aircraft. This is because Hughes helicopters existed from 1975 to 1984. Then it became part of McDonnell Douglas in 1984 to 1997. However, Boeing bought out the Douglas company in 1997, and that is why it is classified as a Boeing aircraft now. So for specifications for the AH-64A or D, it has a crew of two. The length of this aircraft is approximately 17.73 meters with a rotary size of 14.63 meters and a height of 3.87 meters. The loaded weight for takeoff is approximately 17,650 pounds with a maximum takeoff weight of 23,000 pounds. The speed of this aircraft can go 128 miles per hour or approximately 290. 93 kilometers per hour. The range is about 470 miles with a combat radius of 300 miles. The service ceiling for this aircraft is around 21,000 feet with a rate of climb of 2,500 feet a minute. As for guns, it has a standard 1x30 millimeter M230 chain gun with approximately 1,200 rounds. For hard points, they can carry up to four of them. For example, most of the longbows are usually aimed on the tips of their wings with AIM 92 stingers, but they can carry a bunch of different things. They can carry chain guns, machine guns, uh, twin missile packs, whatever can be loaded onto those individual pylons. For the ATK-2, however, it also has a crew of two, a length of 13.45 meters and a rotary size of 11.90 meters. The aircraft also has a height of 3.4 meters, which makes this aircraft overall slightly smaller than an Apache AH-64. Maximum takeoff weight, however, comes in at 11,023 pounds. I'm not necessarily sure if that is loaded weight or maximum weight, but it looks like the Apache can hold a lot more. The max speed, however, however, can go 174 miles per hour or approximately 278 kilometers per hour. It has a range of 561 miles. However, for its service ceiling, it can go over 20,000 feet and its rate of climb is slightly faster at 2,750 feet per minute. For guns, it has a standard 1M197 20 times 120 millimeter cannon with approximately 500 rounds. And similar to the Apache, it has four hard points. These can also include rocket pods and many different other things. And of course, similar to the Apache, they can also on the tips of their wings carry two AM-92 Stinger missiles. And for these type of videos, I usually like to incorporate at least a price tag with these two, but unfortunately the T-129 has not released an individual price unit. Whereas the Apache AH-64E comes in at 35.5 million US dollars. The only thing that I can say is when it comes to the T-129s, its entire program has cost approximately 3.2 billion. And the hard part about that is whether or not that includes research and development, which I assume would. And as well, that includes the 59 helicopters that Turkey has on order. And again, I don't know if that incorporates the 30 ones that are being bought by Pakistan. So sorry guys that I couldn't give you that one. I really wanted to, but this is the best I could do. Anyways, guys, my name is Dave Wapla and I want to thank you guys for tuning in and learning with me. You know, it's unfortunate that I couldn't get some of the information out there, but if you guys do have a suggestion for other different types of aircrafts or heck, if you want us to do like McDonald's and Wendy's, I'll, I'll do the differences. It's not necessarily for us to figure out which one's better, but really to get an understanding of why these aircrafts or why anything was made in the first place and the history behind it. Don't forget to check out those awesome playlists, especially if you like military stuff. We got a ton of it that you guys will really, really like and enjoy. But I'm Dave Wapple. Subscribe, comment, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Okay, so now that you guys are all good and you're about to go somewhere else, wait a minute. Check out those playlists that I told you about. God, that is like the worst pitch I've ever done. Anyways, they're there. Feel free to check them out. And... Have a good day, guys, okay? Bye.